Today we're going to be learning how to do a latent spacewalk in Runway ML. This is that really cool effect to where it sort of like smoothly transitions between each of the images that you generate using your GAN algorithm. Uh, so to get started, let's just go ahead and open up Runway. Um, this, in this we're not going to be training any models, we're just going to go ahead and use a publicly available model um, to generate our images and make the spacewalk. So I'm just going to go ahead and do uh, let's try something new. Let's try this one. Make some old people. Um, so go ahead and choose, switch the input source to vector, just like how you normally would do. Um, and this is going to make it so that it propagates images in here. And we're just going to go ahead and click run remotely. So first, we're just going to generate the images the traditional way. You can go ahead and just click the first one that you want. And what we're going to do is click Save Vector. This is going to download the image as a JSON file um, that sort of represents this image as an array. And so that's saving to a folder that I pre-specified. Um, I believe it'll prompt you when you click download the first time to define that route um, or that directory. So now that I have downloaded that image, what I'm going to want to do is open up the files that I have linked down below uh, for generating the spacewalk. We're not going to be doing any coding in this tutorial uh, or in this to make the latent spacewalk. It's not required. Just copy and pasting some code. Um, so as you can see, the JSON saved right here in the folder I had specified. I'm going to open that up later. First, what I'm going to do is open up the latent spacewalk script. So I'm going to open up the folder here. Then I'm going to go into data, and then I'm going to open up the landscape.js. I'm going to open it with Atom. And so Atom is the text editor that I'm deciding to use. There's a bunch of different ones you can use. Um, Atom works good for me. It'll probably work good for most people out there. Um, so, and so as you can see here, um, this is just an array that says let A equal this. And so what we're going to actually do is just copy and paste in um, the JSON file that we had downloaded earlier. So we're going to have to right click this, open with Atom, and should open in a new tab here. And what we're just going to do is select all with Command A, copy it with Command C, and then paste it in here. But what the script is actually going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to alter these uh, it's just ever so slightly to change the image that it generates and to create that smooth transition. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do File, Save, and then we're good to go on the programming side. Well, not programming side, but text editor side. And lastly, what we're going to want to do is open up a empty browser window. Uh, and go back to our finder here, go back to the script and just stay like this. So now we're gonna go back to Runway here on the left side. And all we have to do is switch it over from interface, the traditional uh, setting to network here. Um, and then just go ahead and click Run Remotely. And so as you can see, nothing's happening quite yet. And that's because all we have to do is take this index.html file, uh, drop it up here. Oh, drop it up in the tab area and switch this over here to on runway to video export. Um, and as you can start to see, it is generating the latent spacewalk. And so this is going to be a very choppy process because it's doing it in real time. But what you can go ahead and do is click export and it will start exporting all of those images to the path that you define here. Oh, and real quick, you can make the frame rate whatever. I just leave it at default five and then I change it later um, in Final Cut or After Effects. So as you can see, um, the image in the browser is a bit cut off. It only does this for some models. I'm not too sure if this is because of the pixel, the, the size of the canvas that's defined in the JavaScript. Um, I may be able to tweak that, but I'm afraid it may affect the other ones. So it's not a big deal. It ends up exporting just fine.
Okie dokie, we are back. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the export. It's a decent amount of frames written. Um, you can go ahead and stop the model too whenever you're done with that. And if we give it a brief second, it should save to the folder that you specify. And there you go. Style GAN 2, we'll go ahead and open it up. And again, this is playing at the five frames per second, but as you can see, it's a decently smooth transition between each of the images. Um, if we speed it up a bit, it'll probably look a little bit better-ish. Um, you can sort of play around with the frame rate a bit. Um, but before we close out, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about a couple different things that you can do to get different results. So, so one thing you can do is if you navigate to the JavaScript file and click on style GAN transition, um, and go ahead and scroll down to line 37, and right here where it says truncation, this value here um, sort of changes the variation uh, in the, the, like, the deviation from the previous image. Um, so the higher you have it, the more dramatic the change will be between frames. I believe it comes standard at three. I added it at 0.2. I've done 0.1 for some projects. I've done 0.5 for some projects. And it all kind of depends on the model and the kind of effect you're looking for. Another thing, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hop back over to the browse models. Um, but, so there's a bunch of different ones here. As you can see, I use that one there. Um, this doesn't work for all of them. It works for GANs to where there's a vector input. Um, so that's where it just generates its own images without giving it an input. So this one would work, uh, the shoe one would work, all of that would work. Um, and we could do this same exact thing with all of those. All you have to do is, again, download the different uh, vector files, which is that text file we downloaded in the beginning, and then just run it through the model, changing the landscape.js file.